if you want us, I would like to warn you uh, some kind of introductory talk to a very simple model, which uh, uh, is not so much studied in Europe, uh, it is well known in Japan. And uh, I think it's a very interesting model. And what is the reason why, why we did study this model? So there was a kind of uh, revolution, if you want, <laughs> in, the, in the field of uh, condensed matter called uh, GHG, which is called uh, Generalized Hydrogen Dynamics. And uh, well, in a way, maybe it's better understood, but this was kind of uh, many conjectures were put together. And so people were looking for, for simple models where, where they could somehow test the, the ideas of, of GHD. And in my opinion, I mean, maybe because I like this model, this is really one of the really best model because it's really integrable and you can say a lot and you can confirm ideas of GHD. So you can confirm them in the simplest model, but uh, um, I guess there should be surprise, which I will not discuss here if you were studying a, a little more sophisticated model. So, uh, so now let, let me start a bit, a bit uh, more. So, 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 so this simple model is called box ball system. And uh, I studied with uh, Akutsu Koniba from Kumaba U University. So Atsuo, as you will see, is really uh, an expert on, on, on this model. He's one, even one of their discover, main discoverer. And uh, my older collaborator, Grégoire Misguiche, is uh, also a very good uh, condensed matter physicist. He has a, a lot of intuition about, uh, about this model and also he's very good at, at simulations. So, so I, that, that's what I said uh, maybe uh, in, uh, in uh, the previous uh, uh, trans transparency, we want to find a simple model where we can test ideas of so GG, what does GG mean? So uh, generalized, uh, well, I don't, I don't remember, <laughs> but it's it's a kind of uh, uh, sorry, sorry, generalized Gibbs ensemble. So why generalized Gibbs ensemble means that when you have an integrable system, uh, sorry, you you can you can have uh, infinitely many conserved quantities. So instead of having just uh, energy, uh, momentum, uh, and number of particles, you, you, you put all of them together, so you create a, a generalized Gibbs ensemble. So the, as you will see, this is a, uh, something that can be achieved in this, in this model. So GHD is this ID, I will explain it more in my talk, uh, generalized uh, hydrodynamics, and well, there are many Gs. And uh, also to study a model where there is a direct connection. Now, this is not so clear also between, uh, so the other models don't have this property. So TBA means thermodynamic better and that's, and solitons, so, so soliton physics. Uh, I should say that uh, there is a mathematical paper which is quite close to what we were doing and which was actually a uh, little before us by Pablo Ferrari, Ching Lian, Leonor Rorda, Rola and Mimi Wong. So, so this is also an interesting paper connected to what I'm going to talk about. Oh, oh no, sorry, I pressed the. the uh, so, uh, sorry. I cannot go back. It doesn't seem to to go back. So maybe I should use directly the. Okay. So now I, I don't remember. I was maybe a bit further. Yes. So the origin of the model is um, uh, so the discovery actually of the model comes from soliton physics actually um, uh, KGV. So there is. Well, I will not explain it too much, but there is a very uh, nice idea called ultra discretization, where uh, somehow you take a, a kind of a way of thinking where you replace uh, 
uh, a product by an addition and an addition by the maximum of two of two objects. And so uh, Takahashi and Satsuma, uh, two Japanese physicists, took, uh, took this idea uh, uh, quite seriously and they applied it to KDZ and they discovered the, they discovered the BBS model. So that was in the, in the 90s. And then uh, 10 years later, there was uh, another uh, discovery from, so coming really from a quantum group point of view uh, by, uh, so now uh, Hatayama, Kuniba, my collaborator and Tagaki. And uh, uh, they really realized that some, some uh, discovery of quantum groups, uh, which is called uh, the crystal bases, so crystal basis idea is really to take a, a model and take, so this, the, the most of the integrable model depend on a parameter called Q. And then you let this parameter go to zero and you, you see, you see what comes out. But, but uh, let me say you, so you have to, is to discover the, the, the BBS model. You have to take some kind of fusion rule of the six vertex model and let Q go to zero. But, uh, it's not exactly so you have to do it in a subtle way because if you if you do it uh, maybe the most natural way you, you would find what is called the TZEP. so the TZEP is a stochastic model which is okay, kind of similar to this one but but uh, very different because it's a stochastic model and here in, instead you 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 obtain a deterministic model so so that's the main difference between uh, and of course the physics also is very different. The physics of uh, uh, the physics of TZEP is you're, you're blocked by the car, which is by the particle which is in front of you. So you move, but you are blocked. And here, when you see particles, a block of particles in front of you, you just jump over them. So just a kind of different, quite different, uh, quite different model. So, so or here you can just look at the look at the picture and try to understand. What, what you see when you have this, this BBS. So here I have kind of initial condition when I, where I have some kind of balls, you know, which are put on a, on a 1D lattice. And then you see the motion of the balls. And then what you see somehow, well, it's not completely obvious on, the, on this one, is that, uh, well, the, the, ball, the balls, well, that's not a very good, maybe the next one will be easier to understand, I think. Yes, yes, this one is a, a little uh, easier. So you, so you have kind of, you start, you have a block of four balls, a block of three ball and a single ball. And then you let the system evolve. And what you see at the end is that uh, the block of four balls has passed uh, the block of three balls and the one ball is left alone. And uh, well, it's not not completely clear, but uh, if you were pushing the the model much further, you would see that then uh, the the block of three balls would move at a speed four, the block of three balls at a speed three, and the one ball at a speed one, and they would keep on going like that. I will explain the rule, but that's the kind of idea. So 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 what are the solitons in the model? They are blocks of k balls which are packed together. But to see, to really understand them as a soliton, they must be uh, a bit far apart from the others. Because when they become too close, so you see like in the picture I had before, here you would have thought that you have two solitons of size two. But uh, at, at the later, you see that you own you, three solitons of size two. But later you, you will see that in fact, uh, you have only one soliton of size two and a soliton of size three and, and one. But this, this is because these two blocks are too close to each other. So you cannot, you cannot really uh, make any conclusion. So what, what, so yes, so you, there is a, so, so there is this idea now, if you were making something a little more simple and you had only two blocks, you would discover that the solitons so the, say the bigger soliton would, cr would cross the smaller soliton and then they would keep on going uh, at, uh, at some, some kind of constant, uh, they would recover if you want their, their speed, but they would have been slightly shifted like that by a quantity delta, which, is, which has a very simple expression. It's just, so, uh, 
So maybe there is this number, uh, so a soliton size T and a soliton of size L. After they have met, they have shifted by this quantity twice the minimum of K and L. So, so and, and this you can really discover experimentally. Once I will explain you uh, what is the rule to make the, the, the motion of the balls. But so, so this quantity delta uh, will play an important role uh, in the talk. So now, uh, what is, so you, somehow those of you, we know what uh, the six vertex model is. Uh, you have this notion of vertex, and this is the vertex that describes the, the, the motion of the soliton. So you have a kind of inhomogeneous model, if you want. Uh, on the horizontal line, you can put up to L balls. So now this, the, the model is parametrized by, uh, by uh, uh, some, some quantity which is called L. So if you know the six vertex model, you, you should think that this number L is some kind of fusion, fusion parameter. So, so, and then, so this number N has to be between zero and L. On the other hand, this number eta is between zero and one. So this is, if you want, eta is the number of balls at time t, and eta tilde is the number of balls on a, on a fixed site at time t plus one. So you have the, how the, so what I will tell you is how the number of balls between at time t plus one is related to the number of balls at time t. And, and the rule is, is very simple. Uh, if, if uh, you have n coming here and zero ball, then you pick up a ball. You, you should think of, of this n, if you want, as a kind of carrier. So the carrier comes, and then if he sees that the site is empty at time t, he gives one of his ball. So there is one ball at time t plus one. And of course, this ball, there is a kind of conservation. So he loses one ball. And on the other hand, if the carrier sees that there is a ball, he tries to pick it up. So it goes to n plus one, but of course the, the L, the number L fixes the maximum number of balls that the carrier can have. So this is only if, if n is less than L. And now if n is zero, so if there is no ball and nothing, but nothing happens and the same thing, if n is L and there is one ball, nothing happens. So, so this, this, this is essentially the very simple rule of, uh, of the BBS model in, in the simplest case. Yes. Yes, so you could, you could, so, so I guess this, this was drawn, if you want, for L equal infinity, this, this, this picture. So, so L did not seem to appear in the, in the, so, so this. Yes, yeah, so, so, so time zero to one, you, you should think, ah, okay, because here I, I have not put the, I have not put the, 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 the carrier. So you should think that there is another, another, uh, another. So sorry. So it's, imagine that that uh, that. Well, uh, maybe a, a bit later I, I will show. I mean, yes. Yeah, so that's that's the rule. I mean, that that's the more general rule. So so here, I mean, eta one, eta two, up to eta l is the occupation number at time zero. So this this was. Uh, and eta till one, eta till two, up to eta till L, big L, is the occupation at time one. So, so now you can, you can somehow uh, make the connection with the, with the previous pitch. Uh, so, so if you on this line here and this line here, they correspond to time zero occupation. So, so if you want, this is zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, one. And at time one, you have zero, 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 one, 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 and so on. And, uh, if, you, if you go from this picture to the vertex picture. Sorry, yes, it's a, 
So, so, so the balls are times zero. This is this number. It, sorry, uh, no, this time it works. Uh, sorry. So, so at, at time zero, the, the occupation number are a bit, so eta one, eta two, which are between zero and one. And at time one, eta t one, eta t two. And, and on the previous, so psi, this number psi, uh, you, 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 you could not see on the other picture. They, they, they are kind of additional thing. Um, well, there are the two technical uh, statements, which I, I should say is that this is, so you could do an infinite chain. So, so, so this is no problem, but you can also make this chain uh, periodic. And then to make the chain periodic, uh, you can make it such that, uh, uh, so uh, it's not difficult to find the rule, but uh, I just, you can make it such that this psi tide L is the same as psi L. And there is a very simple way to do it, like, which I don't want to explain here in growth theory detail. But so, so then if you, if you make it such that psi tai L is psi L, this is like closing the chain. Because you, I mean, you, 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 in quantum mechanics, you would take the trace, but here you don't, you don't, cannot take the trace. So you, you have, well, in, in a statistical model, you would take the trace. So you, you have to make sure that, that the carrier has the same number of volts at the end. And now the important point about this, so this is a transfer matrix. It's not a transfer matrix because it's not really a matrix. It's a permutation, if you want. It's something which is a, it's a deterministic model. So there is no probability of going from eta one to eta t. It's just a one-to-one. -one, uh, I mean, it's really a move. I mean, a, a classical move. Uh, but still, you can define a kind of notion of commutation because, I mean, you can think of a certain time evolution given by a number L, another time evolution given by a number by L prime, and then you could try to commute these two time exactly like in KDV, the different times if you want. So you, you have a time L, a time L prime, and you can commute the time evolution and, and, uh, and the commute. I mean, you can commute the, and, and you can check that the result is the same at the end. So, what is the what is the is uh, yeah. I, I, so maybe I, I so this was what I said in the in the previous talk uh, in the previous slide uh, this number l n is less than l so, l uh, you fix uh, whatever you like I mean it could be zero, uh, one two three four five uh, okay. l so it's a kind of fusion parameter so it's an integer. Of balls that the carrier that, that the carrier can can have uh, yes exactly the maximum number of balls that the carrier can have think of fusion of the six vertex model as just some kind of uh, of a, a fusion parameter. Of of this uh, twice twice so delta was the minimum uh, twice the minimum of k and l yes. I am not sure I understood that. What's the, uh, what, how does delta enter here? Delta does not enter here. Delta, if you make an experiment, if you want, and you take a soliton of size four and a soliton of size two, after the soliton of size four has passed the soliton of size two, you would just check that its trajectory is shifted to, to, to by, by okay. uh, to, uh, that, that's, a result, if you want, of experiment. Uh, so that's that's somehow a kind of uh, astonishing property of this model, if you want. Uh, another, another, well, the, I mean, it's a very trivial thing. Uh, maybe I did not explain it, but when they are alone, the solitons they move at the speed exactly equal to their size. I mean, if you make this small experiment of the carrier going through, you will see that that. Then the soliton moves at, uh, I mean, a, a block of four solitons will be just at time, next time will be just shifted exactly uh, to, to the right by four, by, by four units. If I remember well, yes. uh, these are properties of the PDD solitons. If I remember well, these are properties of the PDD solitons. Well, you know more than <laughs> maybe this yeah, is a. Uh, 
I, there is a delta in, in, in KDV, of course. I mean, yeah, there is a, the notion of. And also the fact that they, the speed is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's this, uh, water solid, almost like Scott Russell. Uh, okay. That the, the, you mean the speed? Uh, okay, but well, <laughs> probably you're right, but I, 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 I am not. I am not. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm not an expert on KDV, so maybe, uh, I mean, I don't want to, to, to say things. Uh, okay, so now, now why is this model integrable? So in, integrable means that you have uh, many conserved quantities. So what are the conserved quantities here? So, so imagine, I mean, it's very, if you imagine that you have solitons which are very far from each other at time zero and let it evolve very, very, uh, late in time, uh, you, you will immediately see that each, each no, the number of each solid size of soliton independently is conserved. So this is, so, so this can be represented on a Jung tableau, if you want, in a very simple representation, where uh, you put here the size of the soliton, and here the number of solitons of this size, which you, which you have. So this is a kind of, if you want, a certain representation of the of, of all the conserved quantities that you have uh, in your model, and uh, well, it's, you 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 will denote by this number m k, which is just the number of rows of size k, will play some role. So so if you want, uh, you, you have n k solitons of size k, and you represent this as a Young tableau. So now now. Uh, you can define other conserved quantities, which are the energies, and it will be useful to have them in mind. But the MK and themselves, which are kind, if you want, of dual quantities. So, so you, you look at, uh, at K and you draw a bar, and the energy is just the total. So maybe something which is the total number of boxes uh, is the total number of, 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 uh, of balls that you have in your system. But the energy K is, if you want, the number of boxes which are left of K. And now there is a simple formula for this, which you can, uh, it's just the sum over L of mi minimum of K L ML. So, so, so you, and, and the, for, uh, we will use the energies more than, uh, than so if you want, well, there are energies and number of solitons, which are my, my conserved quantities. And then, so now then, this is the most uh, really non-trivial uh, formula, the most non-trivial formula of, of this uh, model. So, so given a certain, if you want, Young tableau that will uh, characterize all the conserved quantities, you have an entropy factor, which just means how many configurations are associated to a given Young tableau. And this is associated, this is given by this so-called fermionic formula given by Kirillov, Kerov, and Vrishek Tikin. And I think this was for a long time a kind of conjecture, but it has been proved since that time. And it, it is just, uh, so a product of binomial factors where now you have a new number which appears. So MK is just the number, product of all solitons, if you want, size. MK is the number of solitons. And then you have this new number PK, which appears. And the expression of this factor of this uh, PK is just the size of your system, L, minus, again, this formula, twice the sum over, so if you want twice the energy. So L minus twice the energy is uh, uh, well, is this number PK, which I mean, if you have a, a some, uh, well, I mean, this, uh, this I will say a bit in the, so, so, so binomial factors reminds you of fermions, of course. So, so this is why it's called the fermionic formula. And, uh, and uh, well, I mean, this is a bit trivial what I'm just saying here, but there is a kind of uh, thermodynamics uh, uh, interpretation. Now you, you go from, uh, from numbers to densities by just by dividing by, by L, all, all P and M. And then this looks like a kind of beta equation, if you want, where you have a, what is called the whole density, sigma J, which is just PK over L, is equal to one minus 
M, well, I put the two just to put two or twice. So, so the, this kind of, if you want a phase factor, Mij, so a very simple phase factor times the, times the density. So, so you have your, if in this model, the TBA equation, if you want, is extremely trivial. I mean, just whole density is one minus Mij rho k. Did I make, uh, oh, sorry. So it's completely wrong. Yes, sorry. So Mij rho j, and, and, and this is a sum, of course. So, so sum over j, Mij rho j. So, so, so it's a kernel, if you want to, um, it's a convolution kernel. I am sorry. So, hmm? uh, rho j, mjk rho k, sorry, mjk rho k. So it's a, it's a really a con. I mean, it's discretized convolution, if you want. I mean, it's, it's a very simple, uh, simple thing. So, so, so now, now you make, what is the thermodynamic? I mean, once you have this information, which is, so I should say also that this, this formula, you can really, so, so you can really come from, uh, from, uh, 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 six vertex or generalized six vertex, uh, uh, TBA formula and go to the limit Q goes to zero and, and you, you can recover, you can understand this factor. I mean, and actually it is already contained in beta, beta paper. I mean, uh, so this is some kind of a very, very, uh, well known factor, if you want this, this product of binomial. So, so, so what is, what is just, uh, you can, you define the partition function. You, and, and this is GGA because you, you will now can put a, an infinite number of particles of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, fugacities, beta K associated to each of the energies. And then you have the entropy factor and okay, you have this, uh, you want to compute this partition function. So, so again, you, you can, so if you do that, you repeat, you repeat the, the usual steps of, uh, of TBA, you, you compute the free energy, which is just, uh, and you want to minimize this free energy with respect to the densities, for example. So you, you look for the densities rho i that will minimize these quantities. And then it's, so you introduce these factors, these uh, our feeling factors, if you want, which has just uh, the ratio of sigma over rho, which is kind of very famous factor, which you find. And you, you minimize and you find this kind of equation, which is called, well, this is a kind of very simplified, uh, I mean, I saw the name Y system appear this model. So a kind of sim simplified uh, Y system where you find, well, I mean, except you have the boundary conditions, which are slightly different, but otherwise it's Y I square equal exponential beta I times, times this product one plus Y. I mean, this morning, this, this, I saw this uh, in several talks, so so that's exactly the same uh, the same story. So for example, so unfortunately, we are not really able to sort the, the to find the partition function, and, and the partition function is a fermionic, is really a fermionic partition function. I mean, it's, I mean, uh, it's log, log sum over logs of one plus this. Uh, I mean, you call this ex, ex, exponential minus epsilon and, and you find a kind of fermionic uh, energy. And uh, so, so uh, okay, so that's what I wanted to say. So, so, so yes, I said we, we can only solve for this for two, for two betas, which are essentially uh, beta one. Beta one just counts the number, if you want, of uh, one solitons of size one and the fugacity for beta infinite which counts the number, so the energy, infinite energy is the number of volts, if you, if you remind, I mean, it's just the total number of boxes in your diagram. So beta infinity is just the fugacity for the density of volts. And I, in, in, in what uh, will follow, I will only consider beta infinity. So, so I, I saw, I mean, we could do it for both, we did it for both, but uh, in this talk, I will just con uh, only consider beta infinity. So, so essentially, if, if you have only uh, one fugacity for the no total number of volts, uh, the partition function is, is kind of trivial. I mean, it's just one plus Z. So Z is, is I mean, the, the probability, so you have your, your, your lattice, you distribute the ball independently on, of each side of the lattice with a certain probability Z over one plus Z. So Z is between zero and one. 
And uh, actually, the model is only well defined uh, for z uh, less than one half. Uh, but okay, I will explain this a little later. So, so, so you 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 put this as a fugacity, so the partition function is trivial. But if you try to recover it using uh, the y the y and so on, uh, uh, this is a, a more complicated expression. But you could check somehow that this is the same result. So, so now uh, I have my partition function. And uh, well, this this will be for the. This is a kind of side remark, but uh, I think this is useful. You could another way to to obtain. So I wrote the TBA equation uh, using the Y system, but another way to write the TBA equation, uh, if you you define this uh, epsilon is exp log of Y, if you want. So so you so you obtain this the you you could put this equation uh, under under this form, and again. Uh, you would have a, a kind of kernel T, which is one minus this matrix M twice the minimum of, of IJ uh, inverted, uh, convoluted with, so those who are uh, more used to this kind of TBA equation uh, uh, would recognize it, but it's just the same, it's the same. But uh, maybe one remark is that if you take the derivative of this equation with respect to the parameter beta, you you give some uh, some exp so you obtain some kind of equation for for the for the derivative of of uh, epsilon and uh, this is called usually called dressing because it's just a kind of uh, uh, DL, I mean, well this would call the dressing equation but this is not the dressing that we are using here I, I'll I'll explain so I mean there is a small confusion we could have used this dressing but we chose another way to do. Uh, well, I mean, this is, so this amounts to solve uh, what is called the, uh, so you, you make this change of variable, Q equals square root of one plus Y. You, the equations write in this form, and then those of you who know a little about show function, they immediately recognize that this is a show function identity. So, so you find the Q as a, as some show functions. And that's, that's nice because, uh, because, uh, then, uh, then you can find, all these uh, densities uh, very explicitly you, you, you find you find this very simple expression and actually our work is essentially based on on the use of this of these formulas so all all the thermodynamics quantities are really explicit in this model so now this is now i, I come to the to the more uh, ghd part and this is so this is an intuitive formula which turns out to be exact. And, and that's kind of remarkable. So now we want, so you see, we had the speed of the soliton in the vacuum, which is kind of very easy, just K. But now what is the speed of the soliton when it is in the medium of other solitons? And so Zakharov discovered a long time ago, uh, well, he, uh, he, had, he had this uh, intuition, which, which is a kind of, uh, Qualitative, he says the soliton is just the speed of the vacuum, and then it's modified by the solitons which you cross per unit of time, uh, multiplied by the relative shift. I mean, either, either you are accelerated or slowed down by the other soliton, and this is a very intuitive formula. So he proposed this formula, and uh, but it was in the context of solitons, and, and uh, really, uh, so this is the equation if you want. Uh, the, the 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 kind of bare speed plus uh, the relative speed it has to be the relative speed times the density times the shift and and then uh, so so I, I should say that this equation although intuitive uh, the the it's not so easy to prove and uh, I don't really know whether it has been proved in in, in our model. Uh, there are some proofs of this equation uh, in the context of GAG, but it's in the case where there is a conserved quantity, which is a current, and I have the impression that we don't have a conserved quantity equal to a current. But that, that's not, uh, okay, so, so, uh, so it's not completely clear to me that we have, a, that there is a proof of this identity. May, maybe in the mathematician paper, maybe in the first paper I quoted by uh, by uh, Ferrari, maybe they have a proof. I, I, I did not study the paper well enough to. Uh, 
but uh, so 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 you so now this is really coming from from TBA. You can give a, an, another uh, another uh, formulation of this, which is uh, that the that so you define a kind of dressing if you want, and the the, the speed is the dressing of uh, so kappa is just uh, the the bare speed if you want, and one is the, just the identity. So, so you you have a kind of this is just a linear a linear equation. So, just solving this linear equation, you find you find uh, this equation. But this is really, I mean, it seems to be not a big progress. But this is really the equation that is used uh, when you come from uh, from TBA. So, so I think this this is a well, it was discovered independently, and this is also a, a big progress. So, we will use this expression of the of the bear steel, and then so then. Uh, also, something which is not completely trivial is that once you have this, the speed in the vacuum, you can define currents associated to any conserved quantity. So, so for example, the, the current associated to the whole density is just the speed multiplied by the density. So it's a kind of intuitive formula, but whatever, uh, I mean, it's not completely trivial. I mean, uh, nevertheless, that you have this conserved equation. In, in the so the I mean the kind of conserved current equation, and then now if you if you plug out the expression of the current and of the densities in this equation, you will obtain uh, you it's not very difficult you, you will obtain uh, this equation, and now this equation is so I'm sorry I did not x y is the inverse of big y, so y is the is the the ratio of sigma over rho. And now this is a much more, uh, this is a, uh, a nice expression because we don't have, here we have the derivative of the current and here the speed is prone, is, is get, get out. So, so this is a kind of Riemann equation if you want, which is much, much more uh, intuitive than, than, than this one. And, and you can, you can uh, use characteristics methods to, to solve this equation. So, th so, so this is an important equation which comes, this is more general than our model. This is a more general equation that comes out from GHD. The normal modes obey this, this, uh, uh, this, this equation. So now what, I mean, let me describe uh, uh, a bit qualitatively uh, what, uh, what comes out of the model. So we make an experiment where we put a certain density in half of the system. And then we let's evolve the system uh, in time. And we look at the density at a certain time uh, la later, at time t. And what we observe is that uh, there, are, there are kind of plateaus, if you want. And the, 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 the origin of this plateau is, is quite, uh, quite simple to, to explain. And even we can uh, find, ex so, so this is in the, uh, not in R, in R over t. So, so these are this, this plateau that appear. And the position of, of, of the, the plateaus also is, is very simple to understand. So I will explain it in the, in the, it's just due to the, to the disappearance of solitons. So, so in the first, you know, you, you have a kind of slow solitons. So as long as the speed is a slower, uh, R over T is less than the smallest speed, uh, you have all the y's, uh, so 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 you have the kind of homogeneous system. But then, at, when you when x over t is larger than 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 this minimum speed, you lose one soliton. So you lose one y if you want. Y one becomes equal to zero. And then, since the speeds are function of the y's, if you want, you have to solve again uh, all the speeds. And and the density, of course, is diminished because the the soliton of size one has disappeared. And you, you, and, and again, uh, after a certain speed, the second soliton disappears, and so on. So, so you, you observe uh, the, the disappearance of solitons, but you are also able, using this simple equation, to characterize very explicitly uh, these speeds. So that's what we have done, and uh, okay, we have a, we have a very explicit expression for the speeds and for the high, for the densities. Uh, so, so height of the plateaus, if you want. And uh, okay, so if you look a bit better at the picture, you will also observe that there is a kind of, uh, it's not a vertical, exactly vertical, but you can have a diffusive, a diffusive uh, widening. And, uh, and uh, this diffusion, well, I mean, 
I, I go a bit fast, but uh, there was some nice papers uh, about diffusion constant by Denardis, uh, Bernard Doyon, and Gola, uh, Gopalakrishnan, Yuse, Hock, and these people, and, 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 and using their results, we can, uh, in this model, we can very explicitly uh, understand the widening of the solitons. Uh, well, I have about five minutes. Okay. So, so well, I mean, I, I don't want also to to go back, but it's quite simple in this model uh, to study uh, the, the transport properties. So, what are the transports? If you want, transport properties are correlation functions of of the uh, of uh, of the uh, either either current or uh, charge. So, for example, uh, one one quantity would be the density. Dens so, density density correlation function. Uh, is very simple to, I mean, it's very trivial to compute. It's just uh, probability times one minus probability. Yeah. And it's conserved in, because Q is conserved in, in time. Q is the, is the total number of solitons, sorry, sorry. So since it is conserved in time, uh, this, this, uh, this quantity uh, uh, is conserved in time also. And you see, it takes a, a very simple expression in terms of rho sigma. And this, this is, so this, this, the speed of soliton i and infinity means that L is infinity. So in the L equal, I mean, for L equal infinity. And, and then, then you can also compute uh, another quantity, which is the current, current charge co uh, correlation, and finally current, current correlation in time. So all this, I mean, because you have a conserved quantity, this quantity do not depend on time. This is called second cumulant. And the root weight, on the other hand, uh, is really uh, some function where, well, it not, does not depend on time, but it depends on the, uh, on, uh, on the, uh, I mean, on the quantity which is not conserved in time, which is the total current. And you see all these formula have extremely similar uh, structure. I mean, you always get this factor, and then you you get the speed. So the only difference here are. Or you get this pi, this, the size, the speed of, of the soliton i. And these are equations for valid for L. I mean, there should be an index L in this, uh, in this expression. And this is very analogous uh, on, on, on another approach due to Doyon Spoon. Uh, so you get, you get, uh, well, I mean, the Drude weight, I don't know you. It's, 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 it's a typical expression that you, that, that you would get. Uh, ah, yes, so, so maybe this is some more interesting property which really is, comes from this model is that you have a, uh, you can define a, a kind of current for energy, so the current of energy G under times evolution L. So you, you can define the quantity if you want, which depends both on the energy and the time evolution. And this turns out to be a completely symmetric matrix between L and J. Given by so the symmetry is not so obvious on this expression, but but this is a, I mean, you can check it is a symmetric metric, and this is a kind of microscopic inter interpretation. So you, you, you if you want you you have a, well the, I mean you have these two transfer matrix J and transfer matrix T G and T K, and you can go uh, I mean you you can find a kind of a combinatoric way to, so what is the current? The current is the number, we, the carrier, if you want. The carrier number is a kind of current because just because of conservation of the vertex. I mean, you have density here and current here and, and you have a way to obtain this expression. Well, I would say large deviation function is very simple to obtain and uh, we have discussed it, sir. So just to finish, because well, I mean, last time I gave this talk, I, I did not know how to compute the, the density correlator, but in fact, it, it's, it's simple. So, so I, I just uh, tried to explain uh, in, a, in a few words what we, what is the, so what is the density correlation? You, you put a kind of delta impulse at time zero in your, in your system. So you make a kind of small, small perturbation at, uh, at the origin of your system of the, dense, of the ball density, if you want. And then you let evolve the system and you look how uh, this uh, perturbations evolves in time. And what you see is that uh, you, uh, you see a series of bumps 
So, so now they are not completely symmetric. So in, in some time it's kind of very oscillating for odd, for odd bumps and not oscillating at all for even, even bumps. And, uh, and uh, these, these bumps, they propagate at the speed of the soliton, which is, I mean, which is uh, kind of uh, intuitively uh, very easy to understand. I mean, you, you, you have, uh, you have, you make a perturbation and then each of the soliton will, will move at, at his speed. And so, so you, uh, it's normal that you, that the, that it propagates at the speed of the soliton, the, your perturbation. Uh, so, so this is for the first bump. So, so this one, which is kind of oscillating, and then you find the second bump, which is here. And uh, the question we, we could ask is, what is the total area of a bump? I mean, if you want, what is the density carried by each bump? And this is a conserved quantity. So, so can we find uh, an analytical expression for, for, for this, uh, for this uh, quantity? And I will just in the last uh, five minutes explain you uh, how, how to somehow, uh, well, because this is a kind of really a very general idea of, of this GHT uh, thing. So, so I explained uh, a few, in a few, a few last transparencies that we had a ballistic propagation of the normal modes which is just, uh, so this quantity epsilon, if you want, is just the, the log of the ratio of the uh, particle uh, over uh, whole density. So, so this, and then, uh, you know, I, I mean, I hide it a bit, but an important uh, thing which, which was found in by Young and Young many years ago is you know the time, ze time zero correlator of this, of this uh, normal mode. And using this equation, you can just integrate it. So it just, I mean, this is the t equals zero correlator. And then uh, if you put time, because it's ballistic, you will have this delta function that appears. So, so for, quite for free from the t equals zero, you get the time evolution. And now you want to find the energy correlator. You use, so, so it's, it's a total, uh, I mean, Spohn's code sit, uh, Lando Lifshitz theory. I, I, I don't know well enough about Lando Lifshitz theory, but it's it's kind of very uh, natural thing. You you kind of linearize, you can linearize your perturbation theory. So you 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 just use a linearization. So you you just use a small if you want small perturbation of the energy around around the around the the, bear, the, the bulk energy, and so you you just uh, so since you know the correlator of the normal modes, you will express your, your energy in terms of the, of the uh, so sorry, well, energy because I have the index one. So before this was a, this was a current, but, but if you put L equal one, it becomes an energy because the speed, the speed of one soliton is one. So the speed disappears if you want in the current. And so you, you take the derivative with respect to epsilon and then you, you use the correlator which you knew, which you knew from the epsilon. So this is a very simple linearization, linearized expression if you want. And uh, so this gives you, if you want, to, so since you know this correlator from here, you, you, you know exactly what this uh, CIG here. And now if I, well, I mean, ex numerically it's, you want to know the, the ball density. So the ball density, you have to put these indexes i and j equal to infinity. And this formula reproduces uh, very, very precisely uh, this, uh, this, this area. So, so if you want uh, the, the area under the bump is just uh, the prefactor here in terms of this delta. So, so it's a kind of uh, decomposition into, into uh, terms like that. I don't know. Well, I, I thought I had, I had, I mean, we have, I mean, I had a plot work really confirming very well that, that this formula is extremely well satisfied. So, so, so that's, that's not the problem. So, so now, I mean, what, what I wanted to say is that this model is really a very simple, you know, integrable, it's a deterministic model, which gives a, a amazing uh, agreements with the uh, hydrodynamical predictions. I think it is also interesting because it's, it's related to very interesting uh, combinatorics. So this is not something which I have developed much uh, in this course. 
for example, you can make some kind of connection with Sheshton Sh row bunting algorithm and the uh, RS, I mean, it calls or RSK and things like that. So I just mentioned two papers, which, uh, so there is a kind of older paper about 2000 by uh, Suzumu uh, Araki, where, where this connection was kind of made, and more recent paper by uh, Yu and uh, Uchikoni and, uh, Sas and uh, Imamura, where, uh, well, it's not exactly the box ball model, but it's quite connected. Well, it looks there is some kind of connection between, at least the rule is, 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 is kind of similar to the, to the rule of box ball model. So, so I think this, this is a further, uh, some more progress could be, more, could be made in, in this direction. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, I was wondering what uh, your in condensed matter experiments, uh, what temperature range are you talking about here and are you using uh, laser cooling? I'm sorry, I, I, can you repeat more slowly? Yes, uh, these these were all condensed matter experiments. I, I understand you're not the actual experimentalist, but do you know what the temperature range was on that? Con in con the temperature range, temperature. in other words, yeah, what what range were you finding these sorts of characteristics? There is no temperature in this. Uh, it's just uh, no. But they they were. I my understanding is the, these were all. This, this all was from condensed matter. Yes. Experiments. What was the temperature range of those? And were they involved with laser cooling? Do you what are the temperatures? You mean? Or, yeah. Yeah. Because well, this is this term is so, a bit key. Well, the, these experiments were were conducted at condensed matter, and nobody tried to do these things uh, this at room mean, temperature. Uh, so I'm thinking is what, what where where does this phenomenon start to disappear or dissipate? Oh, that's that's I know, no, because this is really a, I would call it a toy model. So so you you would really like to see a condensed matter. Uh, well, I, the minors, maybe I didn't understand your lecture, but I was under the impression that this is the phenomenon that you're experiencing on a on, on an experimental basis. Yeah. I think these are numerical experiments. Yes, yeah, what I call numer uh, experiments are, are just numerical experiments. Which so, wait, wait, uh, mild clarification. So these, I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying. In other words, these are experiments that are, are thought experiments, or are these actual physical experiments? No, no, they are they are computer experiments, totally computer. They 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 are computer ex experiments and not not not, 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 not based on, on liquid physical. hydrogen and laser cooling. No, well, uh, how can you? Uh, okay, all right. Oh, okay. But still, uh, still, they are confirmation of the theory. <laughs> no, I mean this is. PZF is maybe a much more exciting. <laughs> so, uh, because you mentioned the KPZ, is there any? So, do you find the exponents like in KPZ or, no, no, or okay. the exponents? Well, are I mean, I don't. We studied the most simple model. Maybe if we start to study more complex, maybe for example, in your model, I don't know if there is some KPZ exponent. But uh, yeah, your model was studied. The, the the model which which you uh, well I mean <laughs> this is in the title so <laughs> so there are models which contain uh, uh, KPZ something which is I think maybe if we study AN we could we, we there might be some change but we have not studied it uh, yes, so so I mean I I don't want to say anything more very more uh, precise about KPZ but. This one certainly does not have any, this is really purely diffusive uh, physics in, 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 in this model. There is some phase transition, I, which I did not discuss. Uh, when uh, you put, so, so when you, you put a density one half, when you approach this density one half, then you, you, ha you have a kind of phase transition, a critical phase, because a, a, a huge soliton starts to fill all the system. 
So, so maybe something interesting might come out about uh, this limit, but I, I doubt it's KPZ. I think it's just going to be rather into sub-diffusive rather, rather than super-diffusive uh, uh, physics. So, so that's, that's not, uh, that will be different. And another question, it, uh, so the model uh, seems to, is related to uh, XXZ delta uh, infinite. So yes. delta infinite XXZ. Delta infinite yeah. in, in, uh, so uh, can, you, can you say how to get one model from the other? Because this, the soliton looks look like uh, uh, bound states of uh, size yes. N of uh, yes. uh, magnums. So... Can you get, uh, for example, this uh, um, uh, phase shift or this uh, uh, this, this uh, shift when you scatter to solitons? Can you get it from the ah, I think, from, I think, from uh, the scattering uh, matrix of yeah, XXZ? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what we do. This minimum of k. Uh, yeah, it looks L, like uh, you, you can really get it by yeah. following uh, the, the the TBA equation uh, in this in this limit uh, q q goes to zero. So if you take TBA equation of the delta equals infinity, you you have a way to, to yes. To, Actually, to uh, some proper. I mean, if you look in Godin book, uh, uh, he wanted to check TBA, so he looked at the six vertex model in the limit uh, delta go go to infinity, and and he obtained many of the equations that I uh, I mean that I obtained here. So so this was already. But the, the problem is you just did it for spin one half. So this would be L equal one. So L equal one is not very interesting because uh, the speed is one. So everybody, it's just a translation in time. So, so to get the interesting model, you had to, to make some fusion if you want. That, uh, the, that is the, the idea. But otherwise, many, uh, many of the equations were, were, for example, already in, in this. Uh, uh, and that's an interesting exercise. So you, to check TBA, I mean, you, you just take, take TBA equation and you look at the limit uh, Q, Q go to zero and, and you, you, find the, you find some interesting things. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Didina's question is overlapping with mine, but uh, somehow when you say that uh, the Q goes to zero or infinite limit of this uh, six vertex model, but uh, it Usually, six vertex model uh, depends on spectral parameter. Ah, yes. So, and so then the, when you when you yeah. scale Q goes to say zero, then do you also scale this spectral parameter? It too? disappears. It that, disappears. That, that, this is why it's it's a simple model. Ah. <laughs> you, you lose any any information of the the, the spectral parameter just. But you can scale goes. also along with the Q. I mean, Q goes to zero limit. Yeah. No. Yes. Then you have a different model. I, you, there are different ways to go to Q equals zero. So right. one, one would be TASEP. So you have to do this crisp, so-called crystal limit, which yes. is not completely, uh, uh, I mean, it's not uh, totally obvious. You, you, I mean, there are many ways to go to Q equals zero, but if you do it in the right way, all, uh, well, actually, this is not exactly. But not only Q goes to zero limit, but also spectral parameters should be scaled sometimes. Yes. Yes, so you can find some, actually, when uh, there is an object which I did not describe here, which is called combinatorial R matrix. Mm. And in the combinatorial R matrix, the spectral parameters can, can somehow re reappear. So, I see. so, okay, this is yes and no answer. I mean, what I did, there is no spectral parameter, but, but you could. You could uh, so, uh, relate to that, so you consider this uh, XXG, which is SU2. So, is there any kind of a uh, Bohr and box system uh, related to SU3 version of this. Uh... Sorry, but Bo uh... So since you said that this is your Bohr box system yes. is related to uh, XXG. Uh, uh, fusion, a few fused XXG, yes. Yeah. Uh, is any SU3 version of it? T T uh... SU3. Oh, no, no. So, so, so. Here I described the simplest one. Mm -hmm. Then there are a whole list of SUN ah, okay. models where, where if you want the, the very, then you need to color the balls. They are not just balls, but they, they, are, they start to carry some color. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. I mean, you can give the color one, two, three to the ball. And the rules is a little more sophisticated, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some like in the priority rules. I mean, you start to move balls one before two and so on, but uh, okay, it works. I, I... 